There is evidence that they were extremely careless in their handling of very sensitive, highly classified information. I thought it would be easier to carry just one device for my work and for my personal emails instead of two. Secretary Clinton used several different servers and administrators of those servers during her four years at the State Department. She also used numerous mobile devices to send and to read email on that personal domain. We went through a thorough process to identify all of my work-related emails and deliver them to the State Department and provided all my emails that could possibly be work-related. The FBI also discovered several thousand work-related emails that were not among the group of 30,000 emails returned by Secretary Clinton. I did not email any um, classified material to anyone on my email. 110 emails in 52 email chains have been determined by the owning agency to contain classified information. It had numerous safeguards. Uh, it was on property guarded by the Secret Service and there were no security breaches. We do assess that hostile actors gained access to the private commercial email accounts of people with whom Secretary Clinton was in regular contact from her personal account. Did you or any of your aides delete any government-related emails from your personal account to uh, uh, conduct the thorough investigation was to err on the side of providing anything uh, that could be possibly uh, viewed as work-related? They deleted all emails they did not produce to state and the lawyers then clean their devices in such a way as to preclude complete forensic recovery. There are a lot of questions that have to be answered. On Wednesday, so House Republicans went on the offensive. We have seen nothing but stonewalling and dishonesty from Secretary Clinton on this issue. Blasting Hillary Clinton and continuing to question why FBI Director James Comey failed to recommend prosecution. I think um, the DNI, Clapper, should, should, should deny Hillary Clinton access to classified information during this campaign given how she so recklessly handled classified information. Director Comey, himself a Republican who spent years as a federal prosecutor, can expect a grilling on Capitol Hill today from House Oversight Committee Chairman Jason Chaffetz. The Republican congressman called Comey's recommendation not to charge Clinton surprising and confusing. We want to know why they're not going to prosecute. Everything that Director Comey said would lead you to believe that she did violate the law. But the window for prosecution slammed shut Wednesday when Attorney General Loretta Lynch effectively closed the case, saying no charges will be brought against any individuals within the scope of the investigation. That isn't stopping GOP leadership, who want Clinton's interview with the FBI made public to show the many inconsistencies in her statements. There's no particular penalty for lying to the public unless the public get tired of it, but there's a real penalty for lying to the FBI. The fireworks just kept on popping all week long when it came to the FBI Clinton email pardoning debacle. FBI Director James Comey testified before a heavily divided House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. The Democrats pointlessly cried out that the Republicans were yet again pulling political stunts. While the Republicans, to their credit, dug in on the lunacy that is the separate standard Hillary Clinton is being held to. Among other revelations, Comey readily admitted there was no transcript of the interview with Hillary and that she wasn't even under oath for the questioning. It seems to a lot of us that the average Joe, the average American, that if they had done what you laid out in your statement, that they'd be in handcuffs. And they might be on their way to jail and they probably should. And I think there is a legitimate concern that there is a double standard. Well, who is James Comey anyway? A career FBI agent that rose to the top? Think again. LaRouchePack.com writes, not only is the Attorney General of the United States, Loretta Lynch, the U.S. Attorney who gave drug money laundering bank HSBC a free pass with a deferred prosecution agreement, but the head of the FBI, James Comey, was plucked by Obama from a plum job at HSBC, which Comey took in January of 2013, just after HSBC got the deferred prosecution deal. Comey's job for HSBC was as a leading member 
member of the bank's Financial System Vulnerabilities Committee, formed immediately after HSBC settled with the federal government for laundering hundreds of millions of dollars for the deadly Mexican drug cartels. Get it? The Attorney General of the United States and the head of the FBI are both part of the deal that let HSBC off the hook. Is there any justice? in Washington, D.C.? Or will the Clinton Mafia maintain its network as the corruption floats to the top unchecked? This is the Ark Encounter, a chapter from Genesis told on a $100 million budget. Four floors of Noah, his family, and beasts, great and small. In this rendition, they sail first class through the watery chaos outside, and seeing it is a privilege and a pilgrimage to the DeMarcus family. What are your first impressions? This is breathtaking, it's amazing. The detail, just even outside, as soon as we walked up, it's just draw dropping. This timber frame arc was built with help from 100 Amish craftsmen, following specs straight from the pages of Genesis. It stands seven stories tall and runs 510 feet long. That's almost two football fields. Something to consider. This ark's Christian backers consider themselves young earth creationists. That means evolution, junk science. The earth is only 6,000 years old. Do you believe there were dinosaurs and people at the same time? Absolutely, yep, I absolutely do. I believe they walked hand in hand. Ken Ham, the ark's 64-year-old visionary, make yourself an ark, leads a ministry called Answers in Genesis. The truth is the word of God. And we are faithfully, as faithfully as we can, representing what God's Word teaches. Mr. Bill Nye and Mr. Ken Ham. In 2014, Ham debated the truth with Bill Nye, known as the science guy on television. I take Genesis as literal history, as Jesus did. More than five million people have watched it online. You don't want to raise a generation of science students who don't understand how we know our place in the cosmos. On this arc, Ham sees Christians taking a stand. And what do you say to critics who say, this is not the truth, this is not scientifically based, this is promoting an ignorant view? People can say all they want and say it's ignorant and say that they don't believe it, that's fine. I invite them all to come here, everyone. Critics complain of discrimination in hiring. Only Christians, no gays or lesbians, and single people have to sign a chastity pledge. And yet the project received $18 million in Kentucky tax incentives, which a federal court upheld. Jim Helton of Tri-State Freethinkers thinks that tramples the line between church and state. Noah's Ark is a church. It is clearly a religious point of view that says science is false. Gay people are icky. True believers may flock to Ham's Ark, but he shouldn't expect an olive branch from Bill Nye. It would be a hilarious thing for people from other parts of the world to come visit. Are you kidding? Somebody really built this? Wow. Use your head, everybody. Just decide for yourself if you think this is reasonable. It happened in a hospital room as she regained consciousness and her doctor leaned over. I remember him kissing me on the lips and then manipulating, physically manipulating my hand to basically rub him. Aaron Vance of Oregon is now speaking out about what has happened to thousands of women in this country sexually abused by their doctors. He said, it's okay, this is just how we wake you up. Her doctor, the anesthesiologist, Dr. Frederick Field, was sentenced to 23 years in prison for assaults on at least 12 women. According to a first-of-its-kind 50-state survey out today from an investigative team at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, more than 2,400 American doctors have been disciplined for sexually abusing their patients in the last 16 years. And quietly, more than half of them were allowed to keep their medical licenses. Some of these doctors uh, are the most prolific sex offenders in the country. But often those doctors escape serious punishment. Dr. David Mata, a family practitioner, once praised in Congress as a great humanitarian, pleaded guilty in 2011 to six felony counts of sexual acts with female patients, but received only probation, no prison. When we went to see Dr. Mata at his California home, he refused to show his face, but maintained his innocence. You're hiding behind a door here. I want to ask you, did you violate your oath? Did you violate those patients? 
I'm going to I'm going to make any, no comment on that. Dr. Mata's medical license was initially revoked, but he is now eligible to reapply for it. And David, the investigation found that all too often state medical boards, which issue the medical licenses, seem more concerned with protecting doctors than protecting patients, David. For more than a decade, the former Miss America was one of the most recognizable faces of Fox News. And hi, everyone. I'm Gretchen Carlson. But on Wednesday, Carlson filed a lawsuit against company chair and CEO Roger Ailes, alleging he sabotaged her career. In an eight-page document obtained by CBS News, Carlson claimed she was fired because she refused his sexual advances and complained about severe and pervasive sexual harassment. It goes on to say that Ailes described her as a man-hater and a killer who tried to show up the boys on Fox and Friends. When she complained about the discriminatory treatment, she claims he said, I think you and I should have had a sexual relationship a long time ago. But in a statement to CBS News, Ailes denied the accusations and said he would defend them vigorously, saying Fox News provided her with more on-air opportunities over her 11-year tenure than any other employer in the industry, for which she thanked me in her recent book. In Carlson's 2015 book, Getting Real, she thanked Ailes for continuing to believe in me and giving me the opportunity to do what I love every day and described him as the most accessible boss I've ever worked for. If Roger Ailes makes a full-throated effort to undercut her credibility, in a sense what he's saying is the person that he's had on the air as a primary host and a primary anchor is herself not credible. Carlson joined Fox in 2005 as co-host of the network's morning show. The lawsuit alleges that despite the show's high ratings, Carlson was replaced in 2013. Don't expect Roger Ailes to sit back and say nothing. He is going to go forward in this case as strong as Gretchen Carlson. James Derek Lovelace died trying to fulfill a lifelong dream, become a Navy SEAL, an achievement which requires candidates to make it through the punishing SEAL training program. The 21-year-old drowned in his first week during combat swimmer orientation. The drill required him to tread water while wearing fatigues, boots, and a face mask filled with water. Eric Davis, author of Raising Men, was a Navy SEAL for 10 years. That particular drill was not one of the tougher drills. According to the medical examiner's report, Lovelace appeared to be struggling when an instructor began to follow him around the pool, splashing water and apparently yelling. For about the next five minutes, Lovelace's head slipped below the surface multiple times, at least twice because the trainer dunked him. The report notes instructors are told to not dunk or pull students underwater. So as long as they're breathing and gasping and kind of splashing around, I personally, if I was in the water, wouldn't be that worried about it. One of the other students apparently tried to help Lovelace. Another person wanted to call a timeout. The medical examiner's report says by the time he was pulled from the water, Lovelace was reportedly still breathing, but his face was purple and his lips were blue. He quickly lost consciousness. The Naval Criminal Investigative Service says it has not yet reached any conclusions regarding criminal culpability. It added, the NCIS investigation is open and active. This is projecting weakness. This is going to make sure that more Americans die. Barack Obama has been promising to close the Guantanamo Bay Detention Center since before he became president. And he's worked throughout his two terms to make it a reality. And it only serves as a recruitment brochure for our enemies. Today, House Republicans pushed back on that reasoning. Under the Bush 43 and Obama administrations, 676 prisoners have been released from Guantanamo Bay. 118 of them have been confirmed to engage in some form of terror activity, while an additional 86 are also suspected. Together, that represents roughly 30 percent of the total released. Unfortunately, there have been Americans that have died because of right. Gitmo detainment. Amer That's the key reason GOP lawmakers say they're frustrated by what they view as the president's decision to prioritize closing Gitmo over making sure the prisoners who are released are sufficiently monitored. That includes Abu Wael Diab, who was resettled in Uruguay along with five other detainees after their 2014 release, and he's now missing. House Republicans say the administration was warned in advance. That the chief of intelligence in Uruguay explained to our committee, gave us the information that they were not allowed to monitor or surveil these six terrorists. And the decision you made 
was to transfer them anyway. Now that this gentleman has escaped, he's gone missing rather, is the Obama administration concerned about that? It, was, it would have been our preference that all six of the detainees transferred to Uruguay uh, stayed in Uruguay. You've stated that.